Houston is a crucial part of the United States. It hosts 2.3 million people, making it the fourth most populous city in the country. It receives over 20 million annual tourists, has the second busiest container port in the US, and is one of the country's fastest growing cities. However, Houston is also one of the lowest elevation cities in the country, with a downtown elevation of only 46 feet above sea level. This, combined with its close proximity to the Gulf of Mexico, puts it at extreme risk from rising sea levels and hurricanes. In 1900, a massive hurricane destroyed the coastal city of Galveston, killing between 6 and 12,000 people, making it the deadliest natural disaster in US history. For nearly a century, dozens of more hurricanes struck the coast, causing minor to moderate damage. Then, in September 2008, the region was hit by Hurricane Ike, a Category 4 superstorm that brought 20-foot storm surges, killing 113 people and causing an estimated $30 billion in damage. Despite this, things could have been much worse. If Hurricane Ike had struck several miles further west, it would have driven a huge wave of seawater right into the Houston Ship Channel, the largest petrochemical complex in the country. It refines 27% of the nation's gasoline, 60% of its aviation fuel, and 80% of its military-grade jet fuel. A direct hit to it would result in the spill of an estimated 37 million gallons of crude oil and other substances right into the Houston metro area. This would cause an estimated $100 billion in damage, the loss of over 500,000 jobs, and the destruction of one of Texas's core economic engines. In addition, it would cause countless deaths, an ecological disaster, raise gas prices nationwide, and potentially handicap the military and aviation industry. Unfortunately, with the rising sea levels and climate change, such a storm is becoming increasingly probable. In the near future, it is feared that such a hurricane will arrive, wiping out the region's barrier islands and destroying the city's petrochemical complex. In response to Hurricane Ike, in November 2008, Texas Governor Rick Perry set up a committee to study long-range solutions to prevent such a catastrophe. By 2009, the committee had endorsed plans by Professor William Merrill from Texas A&M University. He proposed a massive 70-mile-long coastal barrier south of Houston, inspired by the Delta Works projects in the Netherlands. He nicknamed it Ike Dyke. In 2010, Rick Perry publicly expressed support for the proposal. However, after that, no major steps were made, and by 2013, momentum for the project had faded. Then, in October 2018, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers released their own plans for an Ike Dyke. And in August 2020, Texas received another close call, as the deadly Hurricane Laura passed just 100 miles east of Houston. With this reminder, political support for a seawall was renewed. The Army Corps' plans for an Ike Dyke call for a 58-mile-long coastal barrier stretching from the community of High Island, Texas, to the end of Galveston Island. The barrier would incorporate the already existent 10-mile-long Galveston seawall, which would be upgraded from 17 to 21 feet. On each side of it would be 43 miles of dual sand dunes, rising 12 and 14 feet above sea level, in addition to 250 feet of new reclaimed beach areas along the coast. These beaches and dunes would require an estimated 39 million cubic yards of sand and would be designed to blend in with the surrounding environment. To secure the entrance of Galveston Bay, Ike Dyke would have two 650 feet wide deep draft navigation gates. These are inspired by the Mazeland Caring Gate in the Netherlands, which protects the city of Rotterdam from floods. On each side of the main gates, there would also be 15 vertical lift gates, which would rise and lower depending on the level of storm surge. Combined, all these structures would form the first layer of defense, the coastal spine. Off the coast, there would be even more safeguards. To protect the city of Galveston, there would be an 18-mile-long ring barrier system surrounding the city, featuring flood walls, gates, and levees. Further inland, there would be gates at the entrances of Clear Lake and Dickinson Bay, to prevent water from flowing into inland neighborhoods. Lastly, non-structural improvements would be made along the western coast of Galveston Bay, such as home elevations and floodproofing. Together, all of these structures and improvements would cost an estimated 26.2 billion US dollars and would take 12 to 20 years to construct. 
If realized, Ike Dyke would provide some major benefits for the region. First of all, by reducing coastal damage, it would save an estimated $2.3 billion annually, possibly paying for itself in less than a decade. In addition, it would likely save hundreds, if not thousands, of lives. Moreover, by protecting the petrochemical plants surrounding the Houston Ship Channel, it would prevent an ecological disaster, secure supply chains, and guard national security. Lastly, the project would serve as a feat of engineering. The largest coastal protection project in world history, proving that the United States is ready to tackle climate change. Unfortunately though, Ike Dyke would also come with a long list of issues. First of all, $26 billion is no small fee. Critics believe the project is too expensive to justify. And even if it's worth it, collecting the money will be very difficult. Moreover, the dike's construction could harm the environment. It would disrupt local fish and oyster populations while reducing water flow between the Gulf of Mexico and Galveston Bay by up to 10%. In addition, residents have complained that the coastal dunes would block off views of the Gulf of Mexico, tanking property values. Furthermore, the navigation gates would affect shipping traffic. The entrance to Galveston Bay is one of the busiest waterways in the world. The construction of huge gates across it would impede or congest shipping traffic for several years. Another fear is that the project would not fully succeed. A report from Texas A&M warns that the Army Corps' plans are not large enough, and that flooding of the coastline would still occur. To solve this problem, it's been recommended that Ike Dyke be extended in both directions and inland, to prevent water from flowing around it. Lastly, the dike would only protect Houston from storm surges, and not any of the torrential rainfall that come with hurricanes. Hurricane Harvey in 2017, which is tied as the costliest hurricane in U.S. history, created $125 billion in damage around the Houston metro area. Not from a storm surge, but mostly from rainfall-induced floods. Ike Dyke would offer zero protection against this. Despite its issues, the Ike Dyke would still be incredibly beneficial for the region. With President Joe Biden having endorsed a $2 trillion national infrastructure plan, hopes are high that the federal government will supply funds for the project. In May 2021, the Texas legislature passed a bill to help pay for the project's construction. And as of July 2021, the Army Corps is continuing work on their plans, which they hope to present to Congress in the coming months. What do you think? Is the Ike Dyke a good idea? Let's talk about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you like and subscribe for more videos very similar to this one. Thanks for watching and see you next time.